morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you doing today? Excellent. Well, we are up really early. It is right now 3.15 a.m. I just got out of the shower, got my bags packed, and we are headed to the airport. Where we are going, you will not guess. This is really out of left field. I wanted to do something kind of wacky, and I'm going to visit a friend, and so we're going to do a ton of vlogging around where they live. And uh, like I said, you will not guess where we are going, I'm sure. But that's kind of the fun in this, is going somewhere that I've never been, that uh, we get to look and find new things to check out. So let's hit a new exploration. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. All right, we've made it to LAX. Don't be fooled, we're not flying out of Air Canada. Rough night for these people in the airport. Okay, we are through security. No layovers, direct flight. And I pretty much plan on hitting the ground running. I'm gonna get my rental car when we get there, go pick up my friend, and then we're gonna go do some stuff today. I always feel like I'm in space balls when I'm walking through here. I actually got the very, very front seat of the airplane, 1A. Put the fasten your seatbelt, place the flat metal fitting into the buckle, and buckle at the front. Each light vest is equipped with the water activated locator light. the land. Do you know where we are yet? Well, surprise, welcome to Kansas. Oh yeah, for the next week we are going to be exploring Kansas and Oklahoma. And apparently, Wichita is the air capital of the world. Okay, so we had a major problem. I came to get my rental car and uh, they looked at my ID and said, Mr. Lee, your license expired overnight and I had never been sent a renewal from the DMV. So they couldn't rent me a car without having a valid driver's license. Luckily, one time in my life, California has done something right. They allow you to do your renewal online. You can pay for it online and the rental car company will accept the receipt once you've paid that. So I was able to get on renew my license in 20 minutes, and now we have a rental car, so now we can go start exploring. Yikes, that could have been bad. Well, I thought we'd start out here in Old Town, Wichita, looking around the old architecture of the city. And there's a museum I wanna check out here. I'm not sure what the situation is with this sculpture, but let's check it out a little bit. I've never been to Kansas. I gotta take in the culture. Look at the cobblestone streets here. Isn't this great? You know me, I love my cobblestone streets. I wanted to stop in and get something to eat and I saw this and I go, yep, I think I found the right place. I like the old fashioned baseball art they have here on the wall. Each booth has one of these above and a different, different one. And look at the canoe above me. Pulled pork nachos, look at that. That is way more than I bargained for. That is a, uh, if you've been watching Breck's vlogs, I'm, gonna, I'm getting a little worried about Breck because he's now starting to complain about portion sizes not being big enough. Now that he's been in Texas, he's getting spoiled. This is a Breck sized portion. Well, I don't know about you guys, but this is where I'm going today. If you're with me, we're going into the Museum of World Treasures. Yeah, it's exactly like you would think. We're gonna see some stuff. They cannot be explained. We're gonna see some taxidermy, some old bones. Who knows what we'll see. Oh, no gun policy. Well, hello, Stan. Yep, his name's Stan. Check out the eraser. Whoa. So the reason I showed you that the uh, sports exhibit and the pop culture exhibit aren't on display is because that was one of the things I was kind of looking forward to. They had some really bizarre Elvis 
and Marilyn Monroe items on display, but they said that the person that had loaned out that collection wanted it back. Um, so those are not here, but they said there are some of the pop culture things kind of in the museum, so if we see anything, we'll show you. Well, I'll take a look at all of this. I love this kind of stuff. Now they say that this one is 30% complete, all the way down to the teeth. Now look at the interesting position that these are in. It looks like they're battling because this one's kind of like laying on its back, like as though it's being uh, taken down by the aggressor here. And then look at that guy. Wow. And I always love to see a piece of the Berlin Wall. I always just think that's so cool to think of, you know, that this, this moment in history happened, that people, you know, fought back and this wall came down. People that thought they would never ever get to leave East Germany, West Germany. Pretty historic. Check this out. This is Ivan's femur. Ivan the T-Rex, they have a cast of his femur so that you can actually feel and see how big it really would have been. Kind of cool. If you insist. Nice. Hey, 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 what is that? Oh, cool. That one. It's an interesting way to display it right there, right out of the post or right out of the beam. It says it's a parrot lizard. I don't even know how you pronounce that. And let's see what's paired about this. And here you can see you just follow the dinosaur prints through the museum. It does crack me up that they give all of these dinosaurs a name. I love that. So here's Logan. What's up, Logan? Wow, he's long. Wraps all the way around over to here. And look at Logan's fins. They look like gigantic fingers, don't they? This is like the carpetbagger's bat symbol right here. Just flash this up in the air and carpetbagger appears. Look at that. What kind of taxidermy is that guy? It says here that this is the largest fossil bony fish in North America. And it says this 85 million year old specimen was found south of Hayes, Kansas. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. He's a local. You're a local, man. And then look at that. This reminds me of one of the characters from Beetlejuice. When he pulls the nose out, when Alec Baldwin like takes his eyes out to scare the the new family and pulls his nose out. That's what he looks like. Oh, that is really cool. That is a sandstone block full of shark's teeth. And here you have, uh, says it's called a ventifer, largest bony fish that lived in a shallow sea that existed in what is now Brazil. And then here we have a guitar fish. Check out that turtle. All right, let's move on. See what else they have in store for us here. We're going through the ecosystem. I see a lot of stuffed fish. Check that out. That says that this is a, um, a fossil of a fish devouring its prey. You can see it eating it right there. That's interesting. Wow, never seen anything like that. Look at that guy. Says that these were dog-sized three-toed horses. Okay. 
I, I do see three toes in some cases, but wow, look at the bear. I would not want to be on the business end of his bad day. Look at that. Then right over here you can see they have some of the, uh, the bones here. A cave bear skull and lower jaw right there. And then here you have his hind feet. And it says that's a gray wolf. Look at the mammoth molar. Wow, that's a mastodon's molar. And a woolly mammoth tusk fragment. No Elvis hair, but uh, we got woolly mammoth hair. I guess that'll have to do. Yeah, I think I saw online when they had that collection of pop culture stuff, they had like Elvis's toenails and things like that in it. Here we've got some pieces of meteorites. This one says this is an asteroid fragment. Here you can see where it says quartz crystal forming in Dulles Stone Pocket. And I believe what they're talking about is that right there. You can see it's forming there in that pocket. It's pretty cool. And that says it's a lab Labradorite. Never heard of that. Silicone and oxygen mixture. That's a huge chunk of rock salt. Wow, look at that. It's an amethyst geode. Look in there, man, that is cool. Some very interesting geology from this area. As you can tell, a lot of this is all from this area. All that quartz. They really have a little bit of everything here, as you can see. This is fascinating. I love that they have such an eclectic collection here. That is a bone trumpet. And this is a Buddha made of volcanic stone. And these are all little Hindu goddesses. And that's Shiva. Wow, look at that. Wow! In this case is from the Magic Feet Empire with this golden mask here. And then a crown. It looks like some bracelets. Look at that crocodile down there. Wow. Those masks. And that is a massive carving of a buffalo herd. Look at the detail. Jeez, if I can get out, get the glare to go away. Okay, are you ready for this? Treasures from the grave? And I think you knew that that meant we were gonna see some sort of head here, and here's a trophy head, they said, with uh, date unknown. These are grave dolls they would have put in with the burials. Check out these jugs over here, ceremonial jugs, and the one over here, this guy drinking out of it. Look at this jewelry. 800 AD. Wow. Of 
course you have to have a shrunken head. That's just a given. These little gold pieces down here are Spanish coins from 1556 AD. Take a look at those. Take a look at that. I thought at the door they said no guns. Well, they got around it because this is titled Hand Cannon. Look at all the Spanish armor down here. The helmet. And the chest protector right there. And this is kind of cool. Those are stirrups. So they have this exhibit right here in the center and I'm sitting here looking at it at first going, what's this all about? Well, it's showing throughout time every um, different way that they used um, for currency. So you'll see right here, the very first 150 BC is Julius Caesar's period. And currency from the time of Mark Antony. And being that I've been to Rome and got to study some of the uh, history of Tiberius and the Colosseum, it's kind of interesting to get to see this. Constantine the Great. Now we've made it over to the section of the Etruscans and check that out. There's a skull. And then a goddess bust here. This is from 550 BC. Some incredible history in this museum. They have really every time period accounted for. There you can see the Etruscan spear. Here we have a bust of Isis, the Egyptian goddess of fertility. And then we have an interesting Egyptian oil lamp. It says that they influenced heavily on, uh, influenced the Greeks and the Romans afterward. And then there's Pan, face of Pan. And if you remember our trip to Rome, this is a funeral panel from one of the sarcophagus. Look at all the ancient rings. He's being the great Cornholio. Look at this Roman mosaic tile art piece. Wow, look at that bronze sword. Wow. It's kind of He-Man-esque. And there's another dagger, but I like this one because that's an axe head. It's pretty interesting looking. Well, hello, Goldie. I mean, it says that's your name. Hi, Goldie. That's interesting. I've never seen that before either. Chinese porcelain pillow. Wow. We just entered the ancient Egypt section. This is going to be awesome. There's Alexander the Great. And if you saw my bucket list vlog the other day, this is exactly why I want to go to Egypt. I want to see more stuff like this. These old sarcophagus, and this is an old part of a coffin. Cobra's mummy, it says. Yeah, believe it or not, right here in Wichita, Kansas, you can come see all of this. Another coffin lid. Take a look at this one. Then take a look inside. Look at the artwork inside. Isn't that interesting. Here's some examples of the hieroglyphics. There's another coffin lid. Wow. Here's another one. So here we actually have a mummy called the Braided Lady, and she was the one that was actually in that big sarcophagus that we looked at the lid and then looked inside at the artwork. She was originally in there.
And then beneath here, they actually have a mummy inside the coffin. So this one was the one that the braided lady was in. And there's an Egyptian stone scepter. Oh cool, an ancient Greek helmet and some weaponry here. I was always fascinated with Darius, king of Persia. That's a coin with him on there. Here we have some of that amazing Greek pottery. And there is an upstairs, so let's go. Pretty good view of our friends up here. Now up here, it looks like it's all war memorabilia from recent times. So there's Vietnam, here's World War I. I see down here is the Holocaust. Let's check out the World War I stuff here for a little bit. in the trench. They built like a barrack in here. Look at all the World War I weaponry. German grenade back there. Rifle grenade. Well, as I came out of the World War I exhibit, I noticed this, which was very fascinating. This is a Christmas card from Adolf Hitler to Himmler. There's Hitler hugging some little girl. It's kind of weird. This is kind of cool. This is a Tuskegee Airmen document. Signed by all the Tuskegee Airmen. Speaking of Himmler, there's a letter from Himmler. Um, approving one of his generals to go on a six-week vacation. You can see there that's a Nazi dagger right there on the handle. This is pretty cool. Up in the top left it has a book that was written by Bob Hope and it said that it comically recounts his stories of going overseas and visiting the Allied troops and he donated all of his proceeds from that book to the National War Fund. Look at that, Easter eggs for Hitler. That's awesome. It says this is the ready room operations for the 44th Fighter Squadron. And there's the armor of Clarence the Crusader. That's really fascinating. It says it's a poison ring from the time of Henry VIII. It says that um, rings like this at times would be made. They believed that they had um, protective qualities or they could neutralize poisons um, or they said that the royals would grind up those stones and put them in food. And that is a New Year's card from Franz Ferdinand, not the band. And that is a letter signed by Kaiser Wilhelm. Now that is King George IV. He's the king that they, well, he basically took over for his brother who um, wanted to be with a woman who was divorced and that was not okay in the royal family. So um, he became king. He was the one that they made the King's Speech movie about and he was also the father of the current queen, Queen Elizabeth II. And that's a letter from him to his cousin. You can see down there it says Buckingham Palace. Now here's a little exhibit of William Penn, one of the, uh, the first great heroes of American liberty. Now this entire room basically has letters signed by all of the United States American presidents. Lyndon Johnson, JFK, Warren G. Harding, 
Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover. There's some of FDR's China. There's a letter written by Franklin Roosevelt, and then here's a telegram signed by Eleanor Roosevelt. And this is, of course, um, what's his name? Ah, it'll come to me. He was in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I forget. Now that's a 44 Derringer pistol. They said this is the same model that John Wilkes Booth would have used to assassinate President Lincoln. There's a wax figure of George Washington and some George Washington documents. Now this is really cool. They have a picture of John F. Kennedy using the Resolute desk and you can see little John Jr. popping out of that little hole in the desk right down there. They have that desk right here. There it is. Check this out. Same exact desk. Then if you look down here, you can even see the little keyhole for opening that up. And you can actually sit at the desk if you can believe it. So uh, why don't we, right? Oh. Well, I didn't think I'd be sitting at this desk today. That's pretty cool. Like I said, they have a little bit of every kind of history here, and this is a Freemason certificate to Paul Revere, 1794. Now we're in the Civil War section, looking at a Civil War camp. That's a letter written and signed by Jefferson Davis. Now right there under that lid it says this is a piece of wax from the railroad where they captured Jefferson Davis. And this is a shirt from the Lawrence Massacre. It was worn by, it was called a rebel shirt, worn by the Quantrill's Raiders. Guys, this place is insanely big. We have made it through about one and a half floors and they have three. So I'm probably gonna save the entire third floor and probably the rest of this floor for another day because I plan on coming back here at some point, maybe even before the end of this trip. It's just, there is so much to see and take in that I don't want to try cramming it into a vlog, not just one. So there you can see what's on the third floor. They no longer have the pop culture or the sports, but you have historic composers, musicians, authors, and the Old West. Okay, I said we weren't gonna put anything from the third floor on here, but General Custer's underwear, I think that we'll make an exception for that one. That's kind of funny. His winter undergarments. Worn for the Battle of Bull Run. Here's what the old Kansas flag used to look like. Oh, that's brilliant. Look at that. In their Old West collection, they've got something from Blazing Saddles with autographs from all the people from Blazing Saddles. Gene Wilder, Harvey Corman, Mel Brooks. That's great. That's pretty interesting. That is a cape owned and worn by Robert Frost, the poet. Here's a book signed by Walt Disney. Well, goodbye, Mr. Pterodactyl. Well, it was a surprise to see in the gift shop they are selling Jimi Hendrix hats. As they should be, but I was surprised. Oh yeah, I can't recommend this place enough. You definitely could spend about three hours here. They have a little bit of everything as you saw. Pretty cool museum and I do love that when you walk out and you look at that right across there, you can see an old Keen Butter sign faded off of there. I love that kind of stuff. And I do love this architecture. I love seeing all this brick. All right, I just checked into my hotel room. That was a great day. That was a great first day to check out some of Wichita. We're gonna head out to a different section of Kansas tomorrow. But look at my view. All right, my friends, we are gonna call it a night. Thank you, Brenda Hain, Linda Morris, Diane Kerrigan, and Sarah Eberhard for becoming my newest Patreons. And thank you to all of you kind people that sent me a donation for my birthday. That was so freaking nice of you. I will do a thank you in the future for that. Probably tomorrow. Have a great night, everyone. We will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.